Hi, it's Tom from Lone Horizons. I've been uh, writing a solo RPG blog for a while now. That's at lonehorizons.blogspot.com. But I kind of wanted to try out um, recording a YouTube series, uh, you know, a solo RPG series. And I thought I would get started with Dungeon Crawl Classics. Um, I have only played this once, and I played it in a one-on-one -on -one session where my brother was the GM, or the judge, they call it, in this. Uh, and it was really, really fun. I've never played it solo, but I think it, it could be quite a fun one to try out solo if we combined it with, like, a kind of classic dungeon crawl. So I got hold of this for free, which is really nice. Uh, Dyson's Delve, a mini mega dungeon by Dyson Logos. Um, so this guy from Dyson Logos, he, I think it's a he, uh, has a blog, rpgcharacters.wordpress.com, where he shares loads and loads of um, dungeon maps um, and dungeon crawl related stuff. And he has a Patreon there as well that you can you can sign up for. Um, but this is like an 11 level mega dungeon, mini mega dungeon. Um, it says it takes a group of four to five BX or Labyrinth, Labyrinth Lord characters from level one to level six. So I've been um, having a look at this and this is really nice. It gives you the flavor text for each level of the dungeon. And I reckon it might work quite well as a funnel adventure, the first level anyway. Um, so if you don't know, uh, the difference between DCC and other OSR games is uh, you do you make a you make um, a whole load of characters at the start. Each player normally makes about three or four characters, and they're all peasants who are completely useless and just crap at everything. They can't fight. They can't cast spells. They don't have a class like wizard or rogue or anything like that. And um, you send them into a really hard adventure. Um, and most of them get killed, and the ones that survive make it to the end, they level up to level one, and they become your characters. So I thought that would be really fun to do um, in a solo game, because, you know, we can kind of put them through this gauntlet, and um, we're not attached to any of them, and we'll see how far they get. Um, so, yeah, I've got everything I need, almost, because I don't have my weird dice yet. I've got, like, a whole load of dice um, that I can use, but I don't have um, the weird ones that uh, DCC uses, because DCC, in total, it uses a D3, D4, D5, D6, D7, D8, D10, D12, D14, D16, D20, D24, and D30. And um, the reason it has so many is because depending on kind of like uh, bonuses and penalties that you get, you will move up and down the dice chain um, when you roll your die. So like the standard dice roll mechanic is to roll a d20, um, add any skill, any um, stat modifier that you've got, and then um, compare that to a difficulty class, you know, like most OSR games, uh, but in some situations you might go down to only a D16 or you might go up to a D24. So things like that happen. Um, so anyway, to get started, what I thought we could do is, um, I just lost my page that I needed to, it's not a very, it's not a very like helpfully laid out rule book, to be honest. If you look at the um, table of contents, it looks like this. Uh, which isn't great. Um, anyway, that aside, uh, here we go. We can get started by making the first of our peasants. Um, and then, uh, rather than roll up all 16 in one video, uh, I have actually pre-generated the other 15 of them using a really good website. I think it's called Purple Sorcerer Games. Uh, I'll put the link in the in the description. If you're a DCC player, you probably already know it anyway, because it's really useful. Um, so anyway, let's see. 
character creation, rollability scores, determine zero level occupation. That's what they did as a, in their peasant life. Choose an alignment, purchase equipment, and then attempt to survive your first dungeon. Yeah, and if you, it says if you survive and reach 10 XP, you advance to first level. That's when you choose a class. So what I've done is I've gone through um, level one of Dyson's Delve, and I have helpfully, for myself, um, like listed all the encounters on note cards like this, index cards. Um, you'll notice that the first encounter that they might have if they go through one of the entrances is 12 giant rats and um, these are dungeon crawl classics giant rats which are pretty tough I think their hit die is uh, I've got it written down over there uh, hit die is 1d6 plus 2 that is quite a bit more than um, other giant rats that I've fought in other RPGs so that could be fun. But anyway, I've put the XP values in myself. So like that first encounter will be three whole experience points if they manage to survive it. Um, so every, the idea is everyone gets that XP value from that encounter. It's not shared out among them. Um, I think Goodman Games wanted to uh, simplify the rules for XP and leveling up a lot, um, which is quite nice. So anyway, um, let's get on with the first guy. I don't have a lot of desk space here, so I think the um, the book is going to go out of shot partially, but um, we'll get started anyway. So ability scores, um, you know, you've got the, the usual ones, except it does include luck, which is slightly different to a lot of games and quite interesting. Um, but yeah you just roll 3d6 down the line um, and that's it so uh, you don't get to choose or you don't get an array or anything like that it's just classic old school style so we'll just get started with that I'm not going to name this person yet um, I think I'm just going to do everything randomly so like their gender and name will determine randomly um, but for now let's do their abilities so strength that is not great that is six strengths. Ag um, agility, 16. So yeah, a very agile, dexterous character. There's stamina, uh, 12, 17. I'm really bad at maths because just haven't done any for ages. Uh, what is this? Nine. Personality. They all correspond to like what you would expect in the game if you know RPGs. 11 luck. Not too bad. I think that might get a modifier, a positive modifier. Intelligence 13. Okay. It's not too bad. Um, okay, so in terms of the modifiers. I need to look it up because these are these are all different in every game and for some reason they're not listed oh okay here we go shown on table one one they are listed next to the ability scores don't know if you can see that on camera but anyway so six the modifier will be minus one uh, agility 16 that is plus two it's pretty good stamina 17 plus two as well personality nine none no modifier luck 11 none intelligence 13 plus one okay um yeah so if you don't know these are the uh modifiers that you give you to your dice rolls when you're doing any kind of roll um for skill checks and things like that, um, and attacks. So, um, let's see what comes next. Zero level occupation. Okay, so we have got, look, this really long D100 table to roll on for occupation, which is great because um, I think if you play a lot of this game, you're going to be 
rolling a lot of characters, you know, over time. Um, so I moved my percentile dice. Let's see what this person is. 22. They are a dwarven herder. Interesting. So it's a dwarf. Um, okay, so occupation. Dwarven herder. Um, so everyone is human apart from the occupations that are listed with the um, demi-human race next to it. Uh, so they're quite rare. So let's see, Dwarven Herder, they start with a train, a weapon that they're trained in, meaning, you know, I think they don't get any uh, uh, negative modifier to it when they use it. So he starts with a staff, so weapon, staff. Um, we can work out the, it doesn't say how much damage that does and stuff like that here. But we can work that out when we get to choosing equipment and things. Um, and then trade goods. He has a sow. A sow. Is that a female pig? I think it's a female pig. Um, so what's that asterisk? Why did the chicken cross the hallway to check for traps? In all seriousness, if the party includes more than one farmer or herder, randomly determine the second and subsequent farm animals for each duplicated profession with 1d6. Sheep, goat, cow, duck, goose, mule. Okay. <laughs> Funny. Oh, so if they have more than one of these, these occupations. Okay. So this guy has a sow. So that is a female pig that is going to follow him into the dungeon. <laughs> um, right. That's going to be interesting. Let's see, uh, equipment, I guess, I guess the sow can go under the equipment. Okay, there we go. So it could come in handy. Um, maybe if they end up lost for days and days, starving down there. <laughs> um, okay, so there's not much left to do, I don't think. Let's see. Uh, oh, choose an alignment and then, then purchase equipment. Um, so alignment. You have uh, lawful, chaotic, and neutral. And in the world of Dungeon Crawl Classics, it's something that's quite unique about it. Maybe not unique, but is emphasized a lot compared to other games. Um, is it's, yeah, it's very influenced by classic old, um, like pulp fantasy fiction from the 50s and 60s, I think. I've read one of those books, Elric of Melnibone, I think it's pronounced. I forget the author's name. And I read it after I got into all these OSR RPGs, um, just because it was uh, it was kind of recommended reading. And it was very, very much like this. Um, deal Doing deals with demons and weird, powerful beings from other dimensions. Um, making bargains with them and then having to give up part of your soul or um, having to pay for something in a way you might not like in exchange for power, things like that. So these alignments sort of reflect that. That's why there isn't, you know, the standard D&D &D alignments. Um, so there's lawful, chaotic and neutral. Um, so I said I was going to randomly generate everything. So let's do that. Uh, I don't have a D3, but I've got a D6, so we'll just divide it into three. Um, and the first will be lawful, second chaotic, and third neutral. So that's one. He's lawful. All right. Um, and in terms of these alignments, we will sort of attempt to like role play the characters a tiny bit, even though they're not going to, I don't think they're going to be interacting with many NPCs or anything like that. Um, and most of them are going to die anyway, but um, yeah, I'll try and role play them according to their characters, as well as something I've just remembered. Um, this is a really good little, um, I don't know, RPG supplement. Une, or Une, however you're supposed to say it. The Universal NPC Emulator by Zach Best. Uh, and this is just something I use now and then in solo games. Uh, to get like a description, a really, really simple description of an NPC. So I think we're going to do it for our characters here. Um, so here's a D100 table. 
to roll on this this uh, we don't even know if it's a man or a woman yet this person person's personality 75 they are touchy okay so they might cause friction um in the party so i'm gonna put notes touchy that's a funny see i wouldn't have i would never have thought of that adjective to describe a character um I, it just wouldn't have come to my mind so it's kind of funny that um that it's in there and, and it makes it really a really useful little tool to have um so uh i think they get they do get some starting money um which you can use to buy equipment it's never much so that must be here sometime soon also the the sow is a trade good which you can sell um for money to so you can buy useful stuff but i think it might be quite funny to uh actually just keep the sow um so let's see oh yeah so in terms of like money it mentions here like uh, the typical farmer or woodcutter may sustain their family for years of trade without ever setting eye on a metal coin. Um, so yeah, you start with the trade goods. Uh, in addition to their trade goods, each zero level character starts with one randomly determined piece of adventuring equipment. Roll 1d24 on table 3 to 4 on page 73 for each character. See, this is again with the not great layout of this um, rule book. It doesn't really mention that here. Like, it would be great to have some kind of flowchart or something to go through. Because if I hadn't, if I hadn't read that just now um, about trade goods, I wouldn't have known that. So, anyway, roll one d twenty four on page seventy three for each character. So let's go to seventy three. So I'll put a bookmark in it as well. So a D24, um, I'm going to have to use a dice rolling app on my phone um, to be able to do that right now. Uh, so let's find it. Here we go. Okay, so we've got the D24 here. This is Sophie's dice. Costs about four pounds in uh, British money, which is a great deal. Okay, 23. A torch. Okay. That's that's actually really useful. Um, so, put a bookmark in there. Uh, yeah, so he's got a torch. I'll put torch times one. Um, so, there is a bit where it tells you how much money they start with. So, purchase equipment, blah, blah, blah. Ability, here's the ability scores. Ah, here we go, look, zero level. All zero level characters start with the following. 5d12 copper pieces. And it's got the hit points here as well. It's just a bit of a strange way of laying it out because when you look at this page, um, it says character creation follows these steps um, and it gives you the steps there but that doesn't include all this stuff so it would be great if you could just have it at, at a glance I suppose um, if you play a lot of this game you know you're going to be doing it all the time so you'll just get used to it anyway let's go through this list sorry I, I did mention this is going to be a kind of rambling video because I've I've only played DCC once as a player rather than a GM anyway um, but we're learning as we go and uh, if I'm missing out on things and making tons of mistakes feel free to be the guy who goes um actually uh, and leaves a comment uh, to tell me what I'm doing wrong because I don't mind the tool um, so yeah they get 1d4 hit points modified by their stamina and they get 5d12 copper pieces. Okay. Um, so 1d4 hit points modified by stamina. And his stamina modifier is actually plus two. So that's great. I'm saying he, but I don't even know. All right. <laughs> let's, let's, do, let's do the name and the gender now. So on a one to two, it will be a man. On a three to four, it's a woman. 
four is a woman. Okay. There's no, there's no way to list that here. So I'm just going to, um, under notes, I'm going to put F. Um, so we could do the name as well, actually, couldn't we? On my screen in front of me, I've got um, Dungeon, the really good website uh, for random tables or random generators for RPGs. So I'm putting in female dwarf and it's generating Kunane. That's a nice, interesting name. So Kunane. The dwarven herder, dwarven pig herder. <laughs> so they, she has a herd of pigs um, that, that she herds around in a field. To know how accurate that is to real medieval times. Um, this bit here, title, that's what you get when you become one of the actual classes at level one. Um, so we've got to do 5d12 copper pieces. So I am going to get the dice rolling up, up again. And I'm just going to do five D12s on the air because in, you know, I only actually own two D12s. So here we go. 26. 26 coppers. Okay, so treasure. Let's put, um, put it here. CP 26. There we go. So as usual, a hundred coppers is one gold. Um, okay. So what else do we need to do here? I think that's nearly, oh, I didn't, I didn't do the hit points, did I? <laughs> okay. One D four, um, plus two hit points, two. So four hit points, max four, just leave that like that. Um, her armor class is going to be 10 because that is an unarmored normal person. <laughs> so I was reading the rule book after making this video and I realized that Kunane's armor class should actually be 12, not 10, because it's modified by their agility modifier. Uh, level zero. Speed. Um, dwarves and halflings can move 20 feet um, per turn or round i can never remember the difference between turns or rounds but 20 in a fight they when they move they move 20 feet okay um so yeah this has taken me a bit longer than i was hoping but we've got nearly everything done we can calculate um her melee attack and damage and stuff like that um if we go to the combat section and uh, I'm probably going to skip ahead while I just refresh my memory about combat in DCC. Okay, so I had a quick look at the combat rules. Uh, the melee, melee attack bonus is going to be minus one because it's just their strength modifier. And then melee damage is 1d4 because that's what a staff does. Minus one, which is the same modifier. And that's it. Um, so... There's two more things we need to do to finish the character. Uh, we have got um, 26 coppers, which we could spend um, on anything we want from the equipment list here. Um, so she ha already has a torch and she's got her sow as well. Trusty sow. The sow should have a name, shouldn't it? We'll think of that later. Um, but let's see. Uh, there's not much, I don't think there's much she's going to be able to afford. Backpack costs two gold pieces. A candle is one copper, but she's already got a, a torch anyway. Uh, can she get rope? 50 feet of rope is 25 copper pieces. Um, so rope, because I'm just thinking rope is always really useful, isn't it? Uh, she could, could get that. Does she need rations? Rations per day, five coppers. Um, we're going to have to have some house rules about things like torches and rations and stuff like that because a lot of the sections of the rule book are <laughs> basically a paragraph or a sentence where Mr. Goodman, the designer, just says this stuff has already been worked out hundreds of times in other 
other OSR games. So just pick one of those systems and use that. Uh, it's kind of funny because in some, it's like a really thick book and some of the sections are extremely uh, detailed with all these tables and things and how about how to do things in the way that they want you to play the game. But then, yeah, like the treasure, the treasure section is this whole page, which basically just says, pick a treasure system from some other OSR game that you like and use that because we can't be bothered to, to, to kind of uh, reinvent the wheel. Um, anyway, so 26 coppers. Uh, why don't we take like two days worth of rations uh, because we don't know how long they're all going to be in the dungeon for. So five coppers per day. Um, so that will be 16 coppers left. And under equipment, I'll put rations times two. And we'll keep track of time as it passes in the game. Um, so 16 coppers is not much she can get for that, I don't think. Um, even an iron spike costs one silver piece. That's useful for jamming under doors to keep them closed. Uh, the empty flask, three coppers. Um, flint and steel. Someone needs a flint and steel to light all the torches, and that costs 15. Okay, so let's give her the flint and steel. So she'll be able to light the torches for everyone. And now she has one copper piece to her name. Um, so she's desperate. Um, yeah, so just checking over this again, there are actually a few boxes that I haven't filled in. This is just my fault, you know, just not knowing the game that well. Um, reflex save, fortitude save, and will save. Um, I will just look them up oh here it is personality affects willpower saving throws for all characters so that is um yeah it's just those those modifiers basically so let's see i think i think reflex save is agility uh yeah so her agility modifier is plus two fortitude save that is gonna be is it stamina or strength? I think it's stamina. Uh, yeah, stamina. So that is plus two. Um, and then will save. Is that personality? Yeah, willpower saving for its personality. So that is nothing. Um, and then this lucky roll. Um, that's here. Basically, um, we roll on this table to see uh, what what kind of role we add our luck modifier to. We don't have a luck modifier anyway, so it kind of doesn't matter, but um, this gives us a little bit of background info about the character anyway. So let's do it. We need a D30 again. Um, so I'll just get that. Here we go, roll that. 11. Fox is coming. Find and disable traps. Oh, okay. So I'll make a note of it anyway. Lucky roll, um, find, disable traps. I mean, just in case, you never know. She might end up being a thief. Of, is it a thief or a rogue? I can't remember. A rogue, I think. Um, she might end up being a rogue. Uh, and then one day she might somehow magically increase her luck stat and get a modifier for it, and then it would be useful. Uh, languages, we can put common and dwarven. As she's a dwarf. Um, and that's about it. She's got no armor. Yeah, so that's that's her done, Cunane. Um, so just quickly, we'll do two more things. We'll just go over the house rules for the game and we will uh, introduce the other characters. So really quickly, this is what I've got so far and I'm gonna add to it as we go probably. Wandering monsters, check once every three turns. So that's once every 30 minutes of dungeon time. 
Monsters will appear on a roll of one on a d6. Each level of Dyson's Delve has its own Wandering Monsters table to roll on. And then Light. Um, this I kind of made up myself, basically. The, the Wandering Monsters rule I got from Basic Fantasy RPG, which is really fun. Um, another OSR game, which you can get for free, actually. And then Light. So torches and lanterns light up 30 feet from the character with dim light for 20 feet more. A torch burns for four turns, which is 40 minutes, then goes out on a roll of one on a d6 after that, checking each turn. Lanterns get 12 turns before their roll. So we don't know when a torch will go out, how long it will last, because they're all, you know, made by hand and pretty random. Um, so, uh, yeah, we'll keep track of how long a torch has been burning for and then start rolling a d6 to see if it goes out after that. So, um, all that's left is to introduce the other characters. These are the um, uh, the little little level zero character sheets here. Um, so, I've left this one blank because after I've done the video, I'm going to put Kunane's details into here and we just use this when we're playing. Um, anyway, let's just quickly go through them. Uh, again, I generated the alignments randomly and um, the names and genders randomly. So, uh, really quickly, we've got LL, LL, L, maybe, who is a cut purse, a human cut purse, and she's female. She starts with a dagger. Um, I'm not going to read out everything on here, but she's actually got some useful stuff. She's got a flint and steel, actually, uh, and a small chest as well. Um, anyway, yeah, she's got Dagger. We've got Ugmus, who is a Dwarven Mushroom Farmer. He starts with a shovel, um, a sack, a candle, and some money. Um, we've got Lessim, who is a cheesemaker. <laughs> Blessed are the cheesemakers. He starts, um, is it a heat? Yeah, it is. He starts with a cudgel. So he's, that's an actual weapon, like the Dagger. Um, and he starts with some stinky cheese, a torch and some some coppers as well. Then we've got Gonathil, who is an elven falconer, and he has an actual falcon which he can bring into the dungeon with him. I'm not sure how useful it will be, um, and I I don't know if like if there's a falcon entry in the bestiary for Dungeon Crawl Classics um, and it can count as an actual character or not. Uh, like the sow, I, th I think not. I think they're basically just a, a tool to use. Um, and he has a dagger with him and one day's worth of rations. Maybe I should buy rations for the others as well. I'll do that before before the next video. Um, so uh, let's see, Groban, a rope maker. Uh, that is a man as well as I remember. Um, so he has a knife, a rope, a torch, and some money. That's really useful. Walton, a noble, nobleman. Um, I wonder what his title is. We'll figure that out later. But he has his own longsword because he's, you know, probably been trained in uh, sword fighting and the noble pursuits that they will like. Uh, he's got a gold ring worth 10 gold pieces. Wow and a crowbar and a bit of extra cash. So he could sell that if he wants, unless it's got sentimental value. I don't know. Dewin, uh, an elven forester with a staff, some herbs and a candle. <laughs> it's quite funny. It's just so random what you get with this game. And that's what makes it fun, really. Um, Kata, a female fortune teller who has a dagger, a tarot deck. Oh, she has a backpack to start off with. That's really good. Okay. Um, and then Mealy, a halfling dyer. Um, that's a woman, female halfling, with a staff, three yards of fabric, um, a large sack, and some money. So the sack and the backpack could be really useful because we need to think about how we're actually going to carry stuff. You can't just load yourself up with gear like... Um, like in a, a video game or something. Um, Orsiette, a trapper, that's a female trapper. She has a sling, 
She needs to get some bullets for her sling, but I'm tempted to just let her pick up stones on the way to the dungeon or something and just have a, have a bag of stones. She's carrying a badger pelt and a holy symbol worth 25 gold pieces. Wow, must be made of gold or something. Um, and she could sell that badger pelt, pelt before going in. Um, Wage, a rutabaga farmer. I had to look up what a rutabaga is because I've never heard of it. And it turns out it's what we call a Swede over here. Um, he has a pitchfork, which does 1d8 damage. That's really useful. And he has a sheep as well and a backpack. So we're bringing all these animals into the dungeon with us. I think it's a recipe for a disaster. That's crazy. And they can't really defend themselves, can they? A falcon might be able to attack a monster because it's a bird of prey, but I don't think the sow and the sheep will have much luck. Um, Heaver, a smuggler with a sling, waterproof sack, and a flask of oil, which could be really useful. Uh, James, that was a, these are all random names from the dungeon website. So that was a pretty normal one that came out. James the woodcutter with a hand axe that he uses at work, I suppose. And he's got a bundle of wood that he's bringing with him for some reason and an empty flask. And then we've got Earmulf, a soldier who has a spear. So another actual useful weapon um, and a shield. That is great, actually. And he has one of those valuable iron spikes and some money. Uh, Aranel, an elven sage. He, oh, that's a he. He has a dagger, parchment and a quill pen, and a torch. And that's all of them. So, um, yeah, uh, we're going to end that here. Because I don't, I don't want to do like hour long videos, to be honest. I want to um, keep them. I don't know, 30 to 40 minutes. I think that's probably what this one has run to. Um, but yeah, next time, which should be quite soon, we will get on with Dyson's Delve and get them all in there, get them all exploring it and fighting monsters and see who gets killed first. Um, but anyway, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, you can always subscribe and give us a like, leave a comment if you want, and all that usual stuff that people say at the end of YouTube videos. Anyway, see you next time.